Resident oh, gamer, Henry and Gryphos. I'm your real resident gamer, OG Philly G. <laughs> Damn shade. Damn, I guess Stop I got flexed on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let let George let George. I'm George. I'm your mother's favorite side whore. Go ahead, kid. What were you saying? That was all. I got flexed on. <laughs> out here bagging milfs. Holla at your boy. Oh my god. Do you really want to talk about this? No. I'm just, okay. I'm okay. Just it out there. Hey, okay. Man, me all too. Right. too but they're not wait. real milfs. Oh, I was about to say. Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> She's a cat mom. Oh my god. Stop. All right. So now I can't tell her that I have a podcast. <laughs> Thanks. You know who brought it up? No, I was just gonna leave it at bagging milfs. <laughs> you know? Uh, well, well, you know. There's you know. so many fucking cat mom milfs out there, bro. Don't and worry. Cody's fucking so many of them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is getting too deep now. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to restart again. I'm mad. <laughs> one, one punched him in the face. I, we're not. We're not restarting again. She you, threw a cat did, at him. Actually, you did this to yourself. <laughs> no, I didn't put any detail. You knew. All right, we're, we're done. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying. Are we restarting her? No. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, All right, now let's go from that note onto a more emo emotional note. Emotional? That's what these. That's what this topic is today. Is so emotional? Cody actually got attached to this milf, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're not. You're not even close enough to the mic, Phil. Am no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you good? We good? Everybody good? Everybody got their jokes out? All right. Cool. Caleb, don't say another joke. Leave that boy alone. All right. So, it's been a while since we've been in this situation with all five of us, which is kind of dope. All of us are back and actually able to talk and discuss all those fun things. Um, but this week, we are talking um, about two different topics. Stop. Why? Stop. Keep We're not on going, man. <sighs> don't stop. Till you get an F. Come on, you have one job. Open our topic, man. Yeah, come on. Christ. Anyway, <laughs> I was Faster. watching. I was watching Killer Mike's uh, new series on Netflix um, called Trigger Warning, um, which basically is just five episodes about you know some some of his ideas and concepts and his um, beliefs and viewpoints and things like that, and he just puts them into practice, which is kind of cool. Um, so the two episodes we're going to be talking about that I thought were easiest for us to talk about without having too much, without gathering too much background information and without. <laughs> you know, actually researching stuff and going through all that is, um, the first one is about education, which we'll get more into that here in a second. And then the second one is about, um, it, how, how easy would it be to start your own sovereign nation or how, you know, what are the challenges you would face starting your own sovereign nation? <laughs> Fucking money. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> that's one of the, it's one of the points I thought we would uh, get on people? with that. Yeah, that's another. Because who the hell is going to leave a, st a set up nation? That's well, a mighty fine la body of land you got. As, as George saw, there were there were about thirty. <laughs> there's yep. there about thirty. About of them. thirty. Um, Shot the new Africa. <laughs> I was say Canada or not Canada. Uh, California tries to do it all the time. This is so true. does Texas. Texas does as yeah. well. Um, but those kind of the topics we're going to be looking at today. Um, and I don't know how long this is going to take us to talk about. We'll just wing it. Shouldn't be too long though. So, all right. The first thing is, so to set this up, um, basically Killer Mike sat down with kids and asked them what they you wanted. Wanna, you want to give us some references to who Killer Mike is? Yeah, oh, that sounds yeah. like I'm sorry. a horrible I'm, idea for a show. Killer Mike sitting down with children? I thought everybody had the same knowledge you and me did, Cody, and I just, you're right. So, Killer Mike is a rapper in the group, <laughs> Run the Jewels. Um, he is a Grammy running Award. Running, running yeah. He's a Grammy Award winning rapper, so he's very good at what he does. He's very popular, and he's also become a pretty good, a pretty political prominent activist. political activist and, and a solid businessman. Does he also yes, compete in competitive vaping? What? He's what? in a group. Uh, what is it? R King of the Jewels or Runner of the Jewels? Run the Jewels. <laughs> Run the Jewels. Yeah. Oh Jesus Christ! That's so cool. Okay. But not cool. Anyway. Vapes. Um, but yes, here's your fun fact about Run the Jewels. One of them's white. Well, yeah, but it's a rap duo between him and his uh, longtime friend. But anyway, yes. uh, uh, so their first album called Run the Jewels. Mm. Uh, their second album is, I forget the exact title, but it's the exact same album. However, the beats are changed with cats meows. Yo, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're for real? I'm dead ass. That's dope. You've never seen it? Mm -mm. I think it might be called Meow the Jewels. 
That is tremendous. <laughs> that's, that's, that's dope. That is dope. But yeah, really like, like we all said, he's a political, political activist. He's a black rights activist. He is also a very good businessman. Has a bunch of barbershops in Atlanta that he owns, um, which is really dope. Um, but for this, anyway, back to what I was saying. For this episode, he was taught. He sat down with a bunch of kids to start off, and basically said, "What do you guys want to do with your life?" And they gave normal kid response. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a president. I want to be this and this and that. And he straight up told him, he's like, those things are never going to happen for you. Flat out, those are never going to happen for you. Why? Because, well, before I get into why, this is the first question. Do you think it is good for him to do that to children and to set their limits in reality and why? By the way, it's all, it is called Meow the Jewels. So the mm-hmm. the original album cover is like a, a mummified hand pointed as a gun, and the and it's like another mummified hand holding a chain. Uh, this is the original album cover, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the uh, the Meow the Jewels is cat paws instead. <laughs> <laughs> and then the name titles are also different. So like the first song on the original album is called Jeopardy. The first song on the is it says Meow pretty good. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah, there's there's a uh, lie, cheat, and steal. Um, that's called lie, cheat, meow. <laughs> it's pretty great. Killer Mike is so great. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so you're asking, is it wrong for him to tell these children? Are they just like randomly selected children? Mm-hmm. Or are they, yes. Like, children of a specific background. So he, the what it would look like for he didn't get specifics on like what their reasoning was for choosing the kids. I don't believe, but they were all from different backgrounds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I think that's totally wrong for him to tell them that they'll never be able to be what they're aspiring to be. Why? That's 100 percent possible if they apply themselves and go through the proper means to getting to those ends. You basically just, like what was uh what was one of those uh job paths president another one scientist scientist to cu- that cures cancer <laughs> astronaut astronaut that one's a little bit more doable than scientists that specifically cures cancer. yeah except who goes to space anymore fucking nobody True. elon musk decent number of purdue grads right I don't. Sure. I don't think a lot of people go into 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 oh, yeah, space anymore. Into, but you can be an astronaut without actually. Uh, yeah, I understand. That. Nah, but yeah. Anyways, nah. I think that that's if there's a secondary point he's wanting to make with that. At first glance, that seems like something wrong to say to kids. Like they can definitely attain their goals. Maybe even be president. You just need to not, you know, get wrapped up in any scandals. Uh. Okay, so that one's kind of a two-parter. So. Two-parter? Yes, yes two-parter. <laughs> so, some people will say it's wrong because you should never stifle a child's dream. It reduces their creativity it's true. and all that stuff. But, on the other hand, it does kind of show them the real world. And it shows you, like, no matter what you do, if you're in certain scenarios, it's probably not going to happen. You just have to do the best you can do to get to where you want to be. It might not be your dream, but there's plenty of stuff you can do out there that is close. Yeah. So you might not be the president, but you could become like a congressman. Governor. A governor. <laughs> a senator. Congressman. But so like, it is wrong to stifle children's dreams, but at the same time, you can't just you let them... Yeah, you got to be real. You can't just let them go through life thinking, like, they're going to be able to do what they want. That's how you end up with kids who want participation trophies. That's how you end up with asshole adults. <laughs> you end up, uh, what was his name, Brock Turner? Yeah, the dude who raped a bunch yeah, of people. Yeah, that's got how you end up book. with people like that. They can have whatever they want because they were told, like, you can do whatever you want. And then you end and up nothing... with justice systems that feel the same way. Yeah. So it is wrong for them to say that, but at the same time, it's not. So, like, there's – you have to look at it both ways. A double-edged sword, if you will. George? Um, I want to say this right out the gate. So, I agree with his message to an extent. I did. I think he did it with the wrong age group. Had well, he done that we're going to get yeah, into that. He, he, he did it all to an extreme on yeah. purpose. No, no, I know. I understand. That's all I'm going to say. Um, then uh, I understand what he's going for. It is important for people to learn technical skills. He even explains to him because one of the girls' dad is a carpenter. Mm-hmm. He says – her dad will always have work. So right at the gate, it's very obvious and clear what he's trying to do, and I agree with it, and I've always been an advocate for the trades. I do want to say one kind of fucked up thing. It is 
messed up that he looked he looked straight at the black and went, You will never be president. He, yo, he did. <laughs> Loki, like, he looked at the black the black guy's like, I want to be president. He's like, You will never be president. Yeah. <laughs> it's like straight up. I was like, hey, it's real. It's so messed up because the white kid keeps interrupting. He's like, I want to be a scientist and and I'm gonna cure cancer and make a potion that gives all my family superpowers. And then he just <laughs> You will never be president. Yeah. Well, I mean, he even shut the, he shut the white kid down for a second yeah. there. He's like, "Listen, you're not going to do this because we are we're all equal." Yada yada yada. And the kid, was, he's like, "You understand?" The kid's like, "Yeah." He's like, "That's an ally right there." And I was like, "Yo, okay, whatever." But, um, Cody, do you have an opinion on this, or do you have an idea of what you would think? What? Did you not listen to my question? Oh uh, no. Okay, Caleb, what were you to say? I was just gonna say. It. I think that over the course of you growing up, you're going to realize that your childhood dreams are a little bit far-fetched, and you're going to readjust them to more realistic ones. I want them to be a priest. I don't think that's true, though. I don't think that someone grows up like me, for example. I want to be a fucking ro- rocket scientist I when I grow up. I wanted to be an animal scientist. Hmm? I wanted to be an animal scientist. Okay, you could have been a veterinarian. if you Just an animal that. doctor. What's the difference? Oh, you're talking What's about like the di- a, you're talking about a biologist. Don't, we're not doing this. Well, yet. no, you're talking about a this. biologist, someone that studies animals and yes, living that, organisms. Because there's a word for that. It's also a, a, word a, for a, that. a zoologist, not biologist. Be zoologist. Thanks, but still, an animal scientist is. There's, there's different kinds. There's marine biologists. That's true. There's a zoologist. So, just quick shout out. So, my brother's girlfriend. That's what she does. She works with monkeys. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so she actually works with monkeys. And monkeys like, are apes. She's working at the Chicago what Zoo difference? with, I believe it's Gibbons. That's an ape. ape. Yo, wait a minute. Yo. Wait a minute. Cody, you're just going to Yo. <laughs> yeah, Yo. So her summer job is she works at the Chicago Zoo. And that's she dope. basically takes wait, care Wait, the Chicago she, Zoo has apes? She takes care of all the primates. Oh. <laughs> so, but that's what she's going to school for is zoology. Animal studies. No, there's there's a common argument. Is it zoology or zoology? Zoology. I think it's zoology. But there's only one O that pronounces the z. Uh. Oh, you're right. Whoa. Um, Wait a minute. Mm. It's not so, spelled with three O's. Well, it, in the beginning, it's just two. It's zo because yeah. it comes from the the Greek word for zoa, animal. Yeah, it's it's totally zo. It's not zoo. Because if you pronounce it zoo, it'd just be zoology. Yeah, yeah that's right. I yeah. never thought about that till this very moment. It's yeah. a common. It's thank like a you. Com- it's a common argument. Thank yeah. you for shift. Thank you for fixing that for me, bro. Good looking out. You know when I used to say we got me many zoa back at the twelve oh one, fucking animals. Yeah. What the? <sighs> okay. Um, but Caleb, I don't think it's fair to say that kids will just grow up and realize, oh, my dreams are attainable. Because that's not true. Because that's there are plenty of people out there who said they're going to do something from a jump. And then tried to do it and failed. And there are plenty of others who say they're going to do something from a jump and then achieve it. Those failures help you become a better person. They help you. But I'm saying your limits. they they get to a point where they think they're that's what they're going to do with their entire life. And then when they hit that point that they don't, they don't have anything else they can fall back on. Okay. That happens to a lot of people. <clears throat> that just means they didn't plan well enough. And but even then, they're still alive. At the end of the day, they are going to find something That's else not the do. point, though. Well, I think that it's kind of weird to assume that if somebody grows up thinking that they're going to do something, even if they don't accomplish it, they're going to be a bad person because they always thought, hey, no one I said can they're a- going to be a bad person. You said that if someone just grows up being told that they can accomplish anything they want, they can have anything they want. Well, that's totally gonna- different than what I just said. But, okay, I'm, I was touching back on what you guys uh, said a little bit before because I okay. think that's like a little bit of a broad assumption to make of someone that pursues their dreams their whole life. It is a broad assumption, but it does kind of lean into where society has gone as a whole. It's created a group of... So basically, you get kids who are getting these participate participation trophies. You get kids who are never told no. It's, it's kind of clumping multiple groups into one. But yeah, I see where you're coming from. It's an assumption, but you have to look at statistics... And we get a bunch of people who just they don't know to they don't know how to differentiate from standards to like real life. They're also not taught work ethic. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You can absolutely do anything. You just have to have the right ethic. Last and have to know how to fit a certain 
mold. Last kind yeah. of objection Which I is... want to make with this, and I'll like give the floor to you guys because I feel like I've been talking a bunch, but I'm glad you said standards because that's what that metric is that weeds out those people that just got participation trophies with people that are actually qualified to do what they want to do. You can, anybody can go to school, anybody can get a degree, but if you didn't do any extracurriculars, if you didn't do any like supplemental studies, things to make you worth getting that job, you're not just going to get the job based off your participation. That's why there's competition in the workforce. So off of what you just said there, yeah. So we're on the same page. We're just looking at it differently. But basically we're agreeing because you're going to have those kids who you keep telling them, yes, 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 you can do whatever you want. But the problem is you're not teaching them how the real world, world works. So how to prepare. For yeah. So basically you're not teaching kids like – they're actually going to have to put in effort to reach those goals. A lot of kids are just be like, yay, this is what I'm going to do. And they expect that to happen and they're not going to put in that effort. So we agree. We're on the same page. Yeah, I can agree with that. And also what Killer Mike uh, accomplished is he's given them their first uh, real slap in the face. I want to be president. No, you're not going to be president. Now it's up to the kid to decide whether or not like, oh, fuck you, Killer Mike. I'm going to do this shit and I'm going to figure out how. Or... He just goes on his life not being a president. See, the way I look at it is, I mean, we all, I, see, I feel like we're all kind of sort of agreeing just in different degrees. Um, I, I don't have a problem with it simply because. You need that first no. Exactly. Because any every job that I've ever had, you're going to get told no. And I've, I've worked with people and I've seen people who break down and don't know what to do when someone says no. They get nervous. They start like panicking, thinking they're going to lose their job or something ridiculous. And I feel like that's because they've always had these high lofty goals, but no one set them in reality. I mean, like, it's not going to be easy. This is going to be something you're going to have to work your ass for, for life. Like, you're, this is not going to be just like, I graduate high school, I go to college, graduate college, and then it just happens. Sometimes there's a different path set for you. That too. You know, the, you know what the owner of uh, Salvage and Co. said to me? What? When I told him I was uh, moving. Hmm. and that I was going to be leaving the job. It was like, this is good, because this place isn't the end goal for you. And that's when everything kind of came full circle for me. They didn't want me to be manager, because they didn't want me to be there that long. And I was like, hmm, I fucks with you, Dan. Shout out, Dan. <laughs> that's the man. Shout out, Dan. Dan Rubio. That's the name of me. this episode. <laughs> <laughs> no. Dan the man. <laughs> but, the man. Um, so after he kind of shell-shocked them, we'll say, he went on to explain to them, like, the little girl's dad was a carpenter, like George said, that he will always have a job. And he kind of talked to them about that, and then he went to their principal, I think it was, possibly? Yes. Yeah. And he said, can we start a program in your school where we teach kids not to not to think they're always going to be president or astronauts or whatever, the what, but teach them skills in everyday life that can help them get jobs that will give them money for the rest of their life. You know what I mean? That kind of concept of like trade, whether it be trades, whether it be like, I don't know, most of the, they're mostly the word trades because those skills. are the only, yeah. yeah, skills. They're the only jobs skills. that have, yeah. Um, what grade is the school? Like what? So these kids were like children? third or second? They say. were like young enough to where you look like, hey, this is kind of fucked up what he's doing that. Trade yeah. skill like, classes is 100% a thing that's in like, it, know, it wasn't like high school. It wasn't upper, high school. Upper yeah. division education. No, they were like, no. they were like low elementary school. All the time though. True. No. I think it's, it's like more of the well-off schools. Yeah. We just went to fucking Carmel. Yeah. So um, he, so after the principal, the principal told him, no, we're not going to do that to our kids. We don't like crushing our kids' dreams, kind of like how you felt about it. And he's like, okay. So then he re he thought about it. He's like, maybe this is the wrong age group, right? So he found a bunch of adults that were just around Atlanta who didn't have jobs. And he was like, hey, will you do that? Will you go through, Go come meet me, take a test to see if, and I can try and help you get a vocational job get some skills, see we can test you, see where you're at and what you can do, right? Mm -hmm. They go, they meet him, he explains what they're doing, they take this test that's basically about like how to change a light bulb, how to change an electrical outlet. Basic like, handyman yeah, skills. Basic yeah, basic handyman stuff, like easy stuff. Stuff I immediately, I have no idea how to do, but easy stuff, right? I had a guy told me he had no idea how to take a battery out of a car. I mean, I don't know how to do that, so. Just look at it. <laughs> it's not... <laughs> It's just fucking difficult. look at it. I've never had to do it before. So you just know. look at it. I don't know. Nine um, times out of ten, it's all like all of like four volts. Oh, but maybe he's just about, look like, at it. 
Because don't you have to also, like, ground it when you're, like, operating with the battery so no. you don't electrocute yourself? No, no you, you can touch it. You can do whatever you, you want. As long as you don't like, touch yeah. the post. That's what I'm like, about. You don't want to. No, you don't have to ground anything. Oh, okay. Just don't grab the post together. <laughs> you don't ground it. You remove the ground from the circuit. That way the circuit's unoperational. That's what it was. Something to do with the ground is all I remembered. Because I've only had to replace the battery on a car, like, once in my entire life. Just look at it. Super um, easy. But, so these people take this test, they all failed miserably, right? <laughs> I figure that's normal. You know, if people never had been faced with these kind of issues, you know, you don't know something until you learn it, right? So, he takes that and he talks to them and they're like, he's like, well, why why haven't you guys learned this? You know, there's YouTube. Why haven't you guys just looked at it? They, they all said the same thing, that it's not entertaining. So, then he had this idea, well, let's combine <coughs> learning with entertainment, right? Ooh. This goes back to something I, I talked about and you argued with me about on a previous podcast. Ooh. What was it? You, you can, anybody can be educated. Information is always there. And you were like, what if they don't have? I was like, you can have access. I mean, oh, I remember that. I do remember that. Mm-hmm. See it all full circle. That's fair. Right. Um, <laughs> but so he had the grand idea to combine porn with learning how to do vocational skills. What? The He's, funniest thing ever, bro. By it's the way. hilarious. The but that's not the point of this topic. Thing. We'll Sir, talk about it for a second. Out of the water, a no, no, no. Phil, 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 Phil. This Phil. is a bathtub. Phil, you don't understand. There, ev- every sexuality was represented in this video. Oh, yeah. It was very, like, forward thinking. Like, there was man. a dude changing a doorknob while he was giving a blowjob. No, towards the end he was getting railed. And he's that like, too. He keeps on missing the screw. That's true. That too. It was real. You guys have Wait, to watch this it. This is legit. Like, yeah, I'm, yes. I'm dead ass. In the documentary. Yes. yes. You see, like they don't. I don't think they ever show dick, but like you see titties. No. Like, yeah, you see titties damn near every episode. Yeah, true that. But anyway, that's not the point. Though. Shout out to Killer Mike. That's yeah. not the point. What? That's not the point. It's engaging. I, titties yeah. are engaging. So that's the point. Sex sells. He he made these videos. He gave them to the. He gave the tests to the same people. They all passed. Some of them had a 75% increase yeah. in their grade. Right? So this is the question I have for you. Is the reason people struggle in school because they don't... It's not invigorating. It's not invigorating or because it's just their mind just can't figure it out. Yeah. Like, is what's that balance between this school is just fucking boring or some people just struggle with school? You need to have that thing that sparks your interest. Yeah. I all mean... Right. Go ahead, George. I, I'll go out and say it has to be engaging. I mean, there are two classes that I always did great at throughout school. Um, English. Not speech. <laughs> thank you, Cody. Uh, English and history. I love history, and I love reading. Same. So <laughs> reading comprehension, shit, like, did you read the chapter? Yeah, I read the chapter. Did, can you remember shit? Yeah, I can remember shit. Did great on those. Mm-hmm. Didn't do good on the papers, as we all know. <laughs> I don't like typing. Fuck you. <laughs> But uh, we're talking in front of people. Yeah. Wait, is there a story behind this? Yeah, you don't remember? He used to fucking torment me in Eng- in speech class. No, I don't. Remember yeah, we were that. in speech class. Oh, and okay. actually, no. When I, used I to wake him up, yeah. and then when oh, he'd yeah. get mad about being woken up, the teacher would yell at him, and I would never get in trouble. He didn't. No, no, that's the thing. He wouldn't wake me up by just going, like, George, just wake up. He would smack me in the back of the head. <laughs> I think one time I jabbed him with a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> He'd get up, like some teacher be George, and he'd look at me like, "What?" And I'd be like, "That's right." He's stabbing me like some pygmy warrior is horrible. Know why I never got in trouble? Why? Because she hated me, Cody. No, because I had a ninety-eight percent in the class. No. What could she tell me? <laughs> Cody, you, you need to focus. Do I? <laughs> really? That was what us. pointers are you giving me? <laughs> oh, and that also was us in economics, dude. Oh my god, he used to. He, Cody, wake up. Yeah, you. Or you talking about Mr. Clayton? Yeah, he try <laughs> he try and hit me with the. So Cody, what do you think the answer is? And I'd wake up and be like, Yeah, you gotta. You gotta hold the drop mic the mic. Yeah, drop the mic. I'd be like, Yeah, you gotta turn the graph because it's not. Even there. And he'd be like, <laughs> he'd be Like, well, you gotta stay awake. And I'm like, like I'm not going to. <laughs> we would all sit there and dick around in class. Yeah. And then you know. he'd call on us. We'd give the right answer. And they'd just leave us alone. The other half of the class is looking at us like, The fuck? How do you get it? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, back, George, what were you saying before? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just no, ignored no it because I have to. Yeah. yeah. Chicken uh, noises. Anyway, mm. I actually did great on the, uh, what's it called? Freeform speech, where just got you got up and talked about something you wanted to talk about. You see how you've tainted my mind? This is your fault. I have no idea this what you're talking fault. about. I don't know what you're talking right. about. So I just want to share my personal experiences because high school, 
I didn't do any of the homework. I would literally scribble down answers right before we were supposed to hand it in. But I'd take the test, I'd get A's. So my average was a B. Low B's, high C's. But that's just because I couldn't do school. Like, that's just not me. Okay. I'm very hands-on. I mean, you're a mechanic. That would make sense. Well, that's why I ended up where I am now. Because well, I've, just, I've always been a handy person. Well, let me ask you this. It's more entertaining, right? It's more <laughs> engaging. I wouldn't say entertaining. <laughs> but I mean, it's just, okay, that's fair. Yeah, I'm yeah. Physically manipulating things with my fingertips. Are you entertained when you know what you're supposed to be doing and it doesn't work? No. <laughs> so, I took every single engineering course at Carmel High School. I got A's. I'm very good at taking an image and being able to rotate it in my mind to see all the different angles. So, like, you take this mic right here in front of me, and I can picture it from every different angle. I can picture it from every different angle <laughs> that the mic is at. Like, mentally, that's just how I work. So, like, school to me, I'm not a textbook words person. So, I never really tried. The one class I actually had to try in was, I ended up, I don't know why I signed up for it. AP English Lit. <laughs> what the f- Jesus Christ. Phil, why? The first essay we wrote on the first day. I got a 52. <laughs> I would I'd be like, I can't do this. God God help me. I can't. <laughs> well, we also dropped out of uh, pre-calc. Yeah. We did true. do that. That's true. I was retaking it because I got a bad grade and I wanted a better grade. And that teacher was nuts. And I ended up getting a worse grade. So I dropped out halfway through. <laughs> she, she, no. I just, her teaching style was all wrong. But back to AP English Lit. So my first essay was a 52. The final, I got a 99. My dude. I got the highest grade in the class. My dude. Just because it actually Excuse made me. me my youth. It actually made me look at the words and the language being used and try and interpret it, which I've always been good at. I just, I had never understood how to look at it and how to apply myself. But that's probably the only class where, like, I actually, it made me think deeper than where I already was. So it's kind of transferred into today where I'm looking at movies. Mm -hmm. Like um, uh, there was a movie we were just watching. Uh, fuck, I forget what it is. But like even Bandersnatch, yeah, Black Black Mirror. I haven't played that you yet. You have to look at the words they're using and like everything they say. I remember the show now. It wasn't a movie. It was a show. Mm -hmm. Lemony Sticket, A Series of Unfortunate Events. I've, I used to their read that TV book. Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Their TV show is phenomenal. Is it? Because it's all based around language. You have to pay attention to the words that they're using. And they use some big words, but every single word that is put in that show has meaning. And you have to, like, pay attention. It's mentally, like, taxing because you're trying to understand what is going on. But it's just, it's a very English-oriented show. Yeah. Or language-oriented, not English. But I'm... Now I'm a mechanic, so I look at an engine. I'm like, this part has to come out. Let's turn this part 360 degrees in my head, and yeah, that should work. Unless you buy a BMW that doesn't work. And we're, no, not, we're, not, we're not doing this. We're not, no, 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 we're not doing this. You just drop because German out. engineers are no, assholes. Cody, Cody, we're Sorry. not doing this. The Germans are assholes. We're a, guys. World War Two. Focus. And one. Focus. Okay. Mercedes helped the Nazis. I think that's kind of interesting how you guys like looked at the whole like education like you know some of the things that could be redundant and stuff like that and US, like u.s education just blows well when, there was a time when i was like just like phil like i thought that homework was just stupid redundant as long as i do good on the test and understand the material that's all that matters but after a while um especially uh down the road in my college courses i got to the point where i didn't know what the hell was going on so i started um Looking at some of the homework and like some of that just like drill and kill, just monotonous work is all right. I need to understand like the formula for this one thing. If I can get it, then at that point the homework is trivialized. But until I do, until I know like these formulas, like codes on the back of my hand, so I can find the situation, apply them on those tests, then I'm going to need to keep on focusing on that stuff. And so kind of once I tricked myself, I want to say, into thinking that I need to do this monotonous, um, almost pointless homework stuff. 
yeah. I was able to start doing better on like my tests, things like that, to the point where I am now, where I like working on projects and things with materials that I have almost never done. Like right now, I work with like pneumatics and a lot of fluid power and stuff, and like I took a class for one semester about that, and that's what my career is currently at right now. So. It's kind of just cool because I went in there not knowing anything. I studied up on my homework, and now I'm actually pretty well versed in that you know pneumatic and air power world. And so, that's kind of like where I took education. I just want to focus in on something you said. Mm-hmm. Homework, monotonous. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. That's the problem. Yep. A lot of people would focus a lot more if school was more engaging. If it was actually, I wouldn't say entertaining, but like it wasn't just here's a problem on paper, solve it. It has to be, yeah. It would real world situations are a lot more realistic and easier to figure out than just looking at numbers on paper and trying to figure out. If you could come up with a scenario, a physical scenario, not just paper, but like a physical way to do this stuff a lot more people would be focused and trying to figure it out and understanding Mm -hmm. yeah like it felt like you were it was almost like it felt like you were trying super hard to get the right number rather than understanding how you got the right number okay rather uh knowing how to apply the things that you learn to the real world is so much more important Mm -hmm. than okay i have like 50 or 75 problems i have to get the right answers to or else i'm just gonna fail this class yeah okay well let me ask you guys this then so the reason they all agreed upon entertainment is because we can't lie to ourselves. Our culture is based off of entertainment. There's nothing else that moves our culture more than entertainment. That's how we get through the day. You have social media. You have the news is basically entertainment these days. TV shows, Fake news. music, movies, fashion at this point is entertainment as well. Turn up. Like all these things are how we as a society Legit, like inter- I know it's redundant, but entertain ourselves. It's how we get through our daily basis so that we don't essentially kill ourselves from boredom. So that's why education was used because it's the one thing that everyone hasn't... I mean, that's why entertainment was used is because that's the one thing everyone has in common. Everyone loves entertainment. And on top of that, porn is the most watched industry in the history of mankind. What? Like, more people watch porn than pro- than like watch the news on a daily basis like it's stupid it's true what? it's crazy so like i think the fact killer mike we use it like google um google youtube and i think some one other and all the social medias i think combined get less views a day than porn does like that that number is insane and that's why he chose porn but the idea that entertainment can fuel our engagement in school is an interesting idea because it's the two things you would never put together. Because slapping Jimmy's feels good. I'm not talking about the aspect of porn being in school. I'm just saying, like, using. I'm saying that's why I, everybody knows it feels good. I mean, that's, that is yes, one yes, uniform that's, thing. That's, that is true. I just have to throw this out there because I was on Snapchat yesterday. Snoop Doop. And Poop I was shoot. scrolling through, like, the recommended, like, hey, you might be interested in this. Mm. And it was a posts made by Esquire and it was talking about Fortnite porn Yo, and, how, stop. And, how, and how it's a thing and like they went into all this details about it and I was just like Yo, is Cuddle Team Leader getting taken down by a dick right in, in the interwebs well, right it, now? It was like scenarios like, is, like, that, is that happening? Like, <laughs> It was scenarios like I'm gonna Google this now. Apparently <laughs> I forget the statistics but apparently like 60% of guys have had fantasies about playing video games and then like their significant other other coming in and like fucking them. That's crazy. Like it's just statistics. So like wow. when a new game comes out, porn follows. Like that's just that's <laughs> Yo, how it works. That sentence is wild. <laughs> I know it, it, it is, makes sense. But it's but that's true. Wild. Can we make that Overwatch? No, before Fortnite. Oh yeah, Overwatch. Overwatch is Bad. But before quick thing, Fortnite quick thing. was really big, um, Minecraft I told you I was, was actually it. a really big thing, too. That's crazy. What yeah. did you say, George? Can we make the title of this episode Porn Follows? No. No, we cannot. Damn at it. all. Uh, so, let's let's kind of bring this to a close a little bit. 
do you guys think entertainment could be a useful tool for schools to use? Whether that not porn, obviously, no, but real like porn popped up and it made my mini me wake up. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, not not porn, but like using music, using movies, TV shows, um, fashion, like all using all these different aspects of entertainment. I think it could possibly make schooling not easier but more digestible for students, whether that you be in college or in first grade. It doesn't matter. I agree with you completely. I'm I I'm a huge fan of the uh the uh YouTube channel Crash Course. And one of the reasons I love it because I do learn and it is engaging. They have little animations. It's very fun and intriguing and the person the one of the vlog brothers very charismatic dude who's the guy that made the uh, the history of japan video oh the one does those history of the world videos and bro stuff like that. that guy this is great like you learn the entire history of japan in like a yeah. like in a span of like eight minutes but it's so entertaining yeah yeah have you never seen that video mm-hmm. I, I and you maintain the information it's awesome yeah it's pretty cool i just want to shout out mr clayton again because uh <laughs> fuck that do you dude. remember when we were in class and like always talking about fucking but, but hamburgers. Hold on. <laughs> but hold on. So he's like, Hey, we're going to watch this short video to help you guys understand what's going on. And the dude in the video was literally just like a clone of him. <laughs> That's so bad. And it was just as cringy. Cause he talked the same way. Uh, and like, yo, his cadence when he talked, was it's the rough. worst was, thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's why you slept, because he just puts people to sleep. Yeah. That's what he's... Like, it's he rough. should be a professional sleep, like, helper, because <laughs> if you just, if he just makes an audio ASMR. recording... That's what I'm saying. Like, if he makes an audio recording of just him talking about econ- economics, you will pass the fuck out. We need to find a student in one of his classes right now and get them to record his, <laughs> his like, classes <laughs> and actually make this a thing. It's hard, it's hard to explain, like, how he talks, his cadence. Yeah, it's very... <sighs> I don't want to say monotone, but it's it's, 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 it's you very can't unique. repeat it. Yeah. It's something that you can't recreate. And the only time you got woken up is either if he called on you or when he stuttered. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like it's That's like the when record you're, beat. It, yeah, I was gonna say it's like when you're listening to like an Oceanside record and you're trying to sleep or whatever, and then it skips real quick. You <laughs> wake up and you're hey, wait a minute, bur- bur- burgers, and you're like. Ah. <laughs> That was always his comparison. I know. It was, it was so always bad. hamburgers. See, yeah. I had him for a business class, not econ, so it was way worse. I had him for personal finance oh, and God. econ, back to back in the exact same seat. <laughs> <laughs> and you still aced that shit, didn't you? I aced both of them, yeah. Oh, God. Slept so much. You know what personal Boys. finance taught me about real life personal finance? Fuck nothing. Whole lot of nothing. Yeah. I still don't know how to do my taxes on my own without TurboTax. Shout out to TurboTax, sponsor us. I need to do that. Oh, yeah? I just got my W-2 today. Turn up. Mm. (laughs) You going to get your refund? I already have mine. You got your refund? No, I got my W-2. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're not getting a refund, though, anytime soon. Uh (laughs) But my dad said... Are you serious? What? I said, oh. Because the government shut Yeah, there you go. I was like, no, they actually said that you yeah. still get refunds with the government shutdown. Well, no, they. I think they said, like, there's, like... Oh, it's going to take a lot longer. <laughs> there was, like, a certain, like, as of right now, like, X amount of millions of people will be able to get their refund. And I don't. they didn't specify, like, who. I think it's just, like, they're trying to open it back up. I mean, I filed, like, a week or two ago, so... Oh, well, he's, getting his, he's getting his tax return earlier. I though. get that shit done early, because I want that money. Facts. <laughs> Is it supposed to cost, like... What, 40 or $50 through that TurboTax thing? If you file online, there's a $40 fee. Okay, that's what I was wondering. But they give you the option to print and mail it in. But then you have to wait for it to reach them and all that stuff. So just take the $50 hit then. Hell yeah. yeah okay, yeah. okay, that's what I was wondering. All right. I even took the extra $40 to get the audit defense just because I never know if I fuck up or not. All right, um, we're, Caleb, we'll worry about your personal finances later. No, no, no. I, he okay. told me all I needed to know. That's okay. really cool. File I'm your taxes, guys. About, I'm concerned. I know you are. We'll get into that. Yeah. That's another podcast for another day. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. So we're going to kind of move over to this next episode that... George, you, you all right? Yeah. You live? Okay, cool. I'm just spacing out. All right, cool. Um, we're going to start moving over to this next topic. Um, so basically, in this episode, Killer Mike saw the world, how divided it was, and said, you know what, forget this. I'm going to go make my own country, my own sovereign nation. And he took experience, He took um, inspiration from, I don't remember what the guy's name is, but I think it was in... Uh, the Nation of Moors. Yes. No, 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 no. no. It, was the, it was the dude in Africa. 
who did it. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't, his I don't name, remember yeah. his name, which was really shitty. Of, no, 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 stop. Never again. <laughs> no. Too much. Yeah, too much. Oh. Um, but some guy in Africa did it, and that kind of inspired Killer Mike to have this idea. And then he went and talked to the Nation of Moors about it, um, and kind of just got an idea of what he needed to do. But nevertheless, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, it it low key didn't work, right? And the reason I think it didn't work is because humans are too far are too far into the rabbit hole, I'll say, to ever to coexist functionally and easily, unless they're like related or they're in love or something like that. Right. So basically my question is you to you is why why do you think the world is so divided to the point where you can't just bring people together under one common goal and still not be able to accomplish it? Get everybody to drink Kool Aid. This just saying. Nice Jim Jones yeah. reference. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Stop. I'm not letting it go. <laughs> okay. So I actually wrote an essay about this yeah. for the VFW essay competition. When I was Yo, in the eighth nerd. grade. Wait, what? <laughs> That's wild. The prompt was about racism and equality. But basically, the grounds for my essay was, as long as there's people from different backgrounds, different color skins, and different <clears throat> learnings as children, there will always be racism Um segregation mm. and people will never look at it, each other as equals a lot of it boils down to how people are raised you can do everything you want to try to erase it but as long as there's different skin colors there's nothing we can really do <clears throat> like people are always going to think somebody's better than the other so we gotta brown the world it's already happening the you the white the white Caucasian male <laughs> is a white dying pe- race. White people aren't in decline in the United States. We are. I, mm-hmm. I know. You know why? Because browning. It's not even the United States. It's in the entire like yeah. world. Like yep. We are a dying race. The last of a dying breed. Cody's not 100% white. I was forced this way. <laughs> me, I'm... The conquerors. Why did your laugh have a beat to it? Like, <laughs> See, me, I'm German. And Dutch. Oh, White bread. You were from the Caucasus Mountains. You were yes. the king of the Caucasus Mountains. The yes. <laughs> Yet everybody follows me. What? Chill, bro. What? Chill. It's no, weird. I'm just... No, just it's low-key true because he he low-key is like... He's dad. Like, right? That's what I'm saying. He's like, low-key dad. Not even in this friend group, but like work He's and dad. outside okay. of work. Like, dad. I just... I'm one of those people. Like, if I really applied myself... Hashtag Phil for president, but <laughs> I don't see his. Pro- I see more like a cult right leader. We're like not doing this again. I mean, I'd go there too if I could. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I would just actually have to apply myself. But so. you're 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 saying that the the segregation division between people is too far in our history that it's just not. It's irreplaceable. It's irreversible. It I is. Mean. So like, it's a really we're, fucked we're, up movie, by the way. What? Irreversible. Oh, it's a French film. The opening scene is a woman getting raped in a hallway. Don't want to see it. Side. Cody had a hard on through. No, 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 no sidebars. No, no. This is Phil was literally this is relevant saying, to Phil's Phil, thing. Phil was getting ready to say no, something. No, this is relevant to Phil Singh. Um, in terms of followers, Cody's got us all beat by four seventy nine. I'm at four oh nine. Then is Phil at like one eighty? Then you one seventy. What are you talking about? Why? Do, yeah. Why do you why know the what? amount of followers I but have? But you and also I don't. have to look at how many people you're following. Oh. I'm following like thirty. Touche, <laughs> touche, hold up. No, we're not doing this. We're not doing what this. What the fuck? Okay. Are you the following ratio is great. Mine is horrible. You know why? Because I don't follow dick. <laughs> That's fair. But yeah, only, so basically what I am saying is like, we're, according to the religions, we are 2,019 years <laughs> into history. <laughs> The time span of life has surpassed <laughs> racism. Basically, we've gotten so far into life that no matter what we do, people are still going to be dicks. Yeah. No matter how hard we try, there's still going to be racism. There's still going to be segregation. No. What was it? The uh, the civil rights movement. Mm. What years were that? Because I uh, don't know. Fifties and sixties. Fifties and sixties. Yeah. I mean, that was that was almost 
60 years ago. This is true. About and, and we're still fighting the same fights. We've made strides, but we are still fighting the same fights that we were fighting almost 60 years ago. Sexualities. Um, well, I mean, it's the same colors, Caleb. <laughs> oh, no, they're also like fucking. I, I understand people. what you're saying. Yeah, but, like, I mean, but they still fucking hate black people. <laughs> okay, I was just they making hate sure. Us less than everyone else now. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Some other people. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be like black looking, but from the Middle East, that would suck. Oh, low key Trudeau. Never. Yeah, mind. I know. <laughs> nah, they going through it right now. That's real. Yeah, that's real. I know you know the answer to this. What is the NBA player who's like? He's darker with the unibrow. Anthony Davis. Yeah. Anthony Davis. Oh, he do he low key does look like he's from Middle East. But he's black, isn't he? That's fried. Yeah. That's fried. But people love him because he's a billionaire basketball player. But when you, you know. have enough money, racism doesn't apply to you. That's not true. Mm. As much as the rest of the world. That's not true. <laughs> but then you break the stereotypes like Kanye. Oh, God. <laughs> Maga- Shout out Kanye. <laughs> so wait, that Joe Rogan podcast, bro. I don't. Uh, hold on, let me go in my little spiel here. No, 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 no. Hold on, stop. We are not going on a Kanye spiel. This is not. No, a I'm not going podcast. on a Kanye spiel. I'm going on a fashion spiel. Just, wait, just, this has nothing to do just with. Just listen. That. No, no, no. He no. brought up Kanye. I have no, to. Let, no. let, him, let him. Let him talk. All I'm saying is, you can shit on how much the prices are. However, the quality is unmatched. Okay. okay. And Fair. I was kind of going the same line, but crazy. <laughs> crazy. The red hat. Make America Great Again. Hmm. News outlets have been calling it the new white hood. Representation of racism. Yeah. The new KKK. Hmm. Yeah. But there are... I don't know. I don't know how to say this. No, just go for it. But... Me personally... Yes. I know a ton of people of color... Actual. See? PC, right yeah, there. No, <laughs> the darkies. Who are What's the difference between pro-Trump? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you can't, just because they're wearing a hat, you can't group them with, you can't associate. That was nasty. <laughs> Yo, that, I heard that through my headset. <laughs> that means that Mike picked it up. Yeah. Goal accomplished. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't understand why people are trying to associate clothing with status that's something that kanye wearing the maga like hat has, is is different though because kanye is doing what kanye does and is trying to push an idea by using it or doing it in the most extreme way how else is he going to let the world know that george bush was racist george bush doesn't care about black people on national television holy shit did this man really do that that he man did. ruined that's not michael that, that's, myers that's not that career. wild though i mean it was pretty ridiculous at yeah. the time yeah that's not that wild and then uh taylor swift winning an award hey by the way uh yeah she's not as great as everyone thinks well everyone she is. everyone knew that it's just no but no obviously not because that was when she was at the height of her career yeah but that's because the what was it the grammys or was it the grammys yes yeah the grammys hate black people to begin with so it's not even like but that topic didn't become a thing till after Kanye. Yeah, did but that. it's something everyone knew about. Right. But what I'm saying is I mean, I get what you're saying. I'm just Kanye saying, like, pushes an agenda and he chooses the most extreme way of doing it. What he's doing now is he's trying to push the agenda of in order to fix our problems we have to do we have to spread love. And he chose <laughs> He the chose most, the most unloving bastard in the world. Yeah, to do he that. chose the absolute most hated person in the world right now and was like, Yo, love this dude. And everyone's like, What? Ten years down the line, people are going to be like, damn, I see what he was going to be. I see, what see I, I agree with that. Because, like, the only thing I said before in this podcast, we are so far gone, it's going to be really hard to do. The only way to get love is to give love. And exactly. I'm just trying to be loved while I'm here. Snoop Dogg. We, them all. Everybody just has to be willing to try. You just got to love each other. It's There's also an article out there. I know I've already quoted Snapchat. And I saw this before Snapchat posted it, but there is a colored guy who convinced... (laughs) Phil, listen, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm PC, leave me alone. To be fair, to be fair, it's not different than calling him a person of color. He just had a colored person. Hold on. (laughs) You got to use the... Flip those words, because colored sounds bad no matter which way you say it. Person of color. There you go. I'm trying to help you. Who actually managed to befriend over 200... KKK members. And they all quit the KKK. They all turned in their hoods. That's crazy. Because they realize 
people are people. That's the biggest thing we have to push is people are people no matter what they look like. They could have slit eyes, dark skin. <laughs> the fuck you, yo, dude. Phil, you listen, I hear what you're saying. This is why I think cult I leader, it, by the I way, not hey, president. Hey, I took it to the extreme on purpose to make the point. <sighs> Phil, you went way off the deep end. Khajiit, I took No, I took it there on purpose. <laughs> no, are the Khajiit Mexican or Asian? Arab. Yeah. So you're wrong. Cult leader, yeah, cult leader. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're Middle Eastern, yeah. They play the stereotype. Yeah. I have good praise. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, they're from a desert. So, okay, yeah. so back to what I was saying. Yep. I took it to that extreme on purpose. So, as. So, does that mean the Argonians are Mexicans? Cody. They were enslaved, so they might be black they people. Yo, stop. They could be Irish. Guys, for real. Let, let Phil okay. speak. Well, no, they already so, have black people. It's Red Guard. I took it to an extreme on purpose. The biggest thing anybody could ever push to fix the problems we have now is love. Yeah. Like give, I said, Snoop Dogg said it. But give here's everybody the, a chance. The only way to get love is to give love. But here's the thing. And I'm just trying to be loved while I'm here. We're not the first people to think about this. Gandhi thought it. JFK thought it. MLK said it. Gandhi was new cappy. At least two of those three what people the, what were you? killed horribly. That's the point. You're right, MLK. We should did. all love each other. Pow! This isn't, some, this isn't a new concept. No. But to fix extreme, you have to go extreme. Burn extreme love. So is you're rape. saying so? Like I'm not saying what MLK did obviously was extreme for the time. Oh hell yeah! But he wasn't out here. He wasn't Malcolm X again. He wasn't you know I mean? hugging <laughs> Klansmen. He was. You know what I'm saying? That's fair. But okay, that if if he tried to touch a Klansman that time, he would have been beheaded. Right. Like, that's yeah. a, but but here's the thing, right? He put the stepping stones in in a lot in the line, and. Somewhere along the way, the stepping stones got were stopped. You know, stop, people stopped putting it down. They, it was, it, they reached what was seemed to be the end of the road. However, he was trying to fix an irrational thought with, at that time, an irrational thought. So, what Kanye is doing is don't compare Kanye to him. Okay, I, I know what you're trying to say, but please don't. I mean, That's just so disrespectful. It's it is, but it's not. No, it's it's, it's completely no, disrespectful. Just, just listen. Oh, oh, shit. Just listen. Like an nobody's comparing. You're not on the mic. Nobody's Stop comparing. <laughs> nobody's comparing. What I'm saying is, somewhere along the line, obviously the stepping stones stopped being placed. Yeah. Right? It seemed to be the end of the road. Hey, we're free. We got our rights. Cool. However, uh, ghettos were built. Uh, the, the thug persona was created by the government. Crack was implemented, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The prison systems. Whatever the what. What Kanye is doing is he's taking an irrational thought, which is this Donald Trump facade thing that we're all living in, and is using an irrational thought to battle it. Hey, this dude's horrible, but guess what? Kanye, if you want to admit it or not, has been quite the face and voice for the black community for a while. Just for being in the positions that he's put himself in. Like, the the fucking face of all things creative right now music i mean entertainment fashion you know what i'm saying and he's a black dude doing that kevin hart's pretty funny <laughs> who funny. came first I'm just throwing that out there yeah that's, right, that's not definitely fair. kanye uh, yeah I mean, no it is fair that's not fair it is that's not fair yeah, kevin hart said it himself i want fire on my stage because kanye did it i mean that's yeah i hear what you're saying but i'm saying like you can't just because kanye came first doesn't mean that he's automatically more influential than Kevin Hart. He is. He is. Oh, yeah, he is. I mean, he is right now, but I'm saying in the future he might not be. So, like, you can't just say, like... Hey, you in know what? Future, and people it might not be a problem. People have been trying to say that about Kanye forever. However, he has stayed the forefront of I, uh, all but, okay, things. But I'm looking at it as in, like... No, I get what you're saying. Like, I'm but, saying, like, Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Who's yeah. the more influential person? LeBron, right? The, yeah. But Michael Jordan retired. Kanye hasn't retired. He's, I mean, he's I, still, I, he's still yeah, in his stride. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I'm saying is... You're getting me off subject Sorry. here. It's 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 just he's not Malcolm X. He's not Martin Luther King. Obviously, we're in a different generation now. Factual. There's different heroes for different generations. There's different faces. That's why Michael Jordan is the greatest of the '90s. That's fair. Right. Yeah. LeBron is the greatest of our generation. Technically speaking, is he better than Michael Jordan? Sure, but that's that's besides the point. Did you just admit that? Did, listen. Did you just hold on? Wait, wait, wait. This is a monumental moment for me. 
Michael Jordan still has more rings. That's obviously <laughs> not a definitive argument. Wait, but what I'm okay, saying is... Continue. Would Sorry. Tupac be included in the 90s or like our generation? Is the 90s. What are you talking about? Well, he you died just, in 96. Yeah, but you said that like other guy was more influential. I thought that Who? Tupac was... Uh, because, l- okay, listen, Tupac's very influential, but Michael Jordan is an international superstar. Like, let's... Okay. <laughs> there's, there's different roles to be played. If you want to look at it... If you want to look at it in the Malcolm X, um, Martin Luther King situation, right? There's different roles to be played. Martin Luther King was looking for just, you know what I'm saying, just let us be, right? Malcolm X was like, fuck that. We want to be us. Wakanda forever. Kind of deal. So there's different roles to be played. You had Michael Jordan, who's an international superstar, a black guy, international star. At the Before that, you had Muhammad Ali. And if you want to compare, like, sports stars... You're going down the rabbit hole, Cody. You're right. <clears throat> what I'm saying is there's different roles to be played. I'm not saying that he's Martin Luther King. I'm saying that he is, in fact, playing a role in the the battle, right? And he's doing shit irrationally, which, as history shows, the only way to get rid of extreme thoughts is to put... Another extreme thought into your brain. This is the only way that has ever been proven to fix said problems. Phil. Kanye 2020. Stop. Phil. I just want to say this. Because I think it's a good overall message for this podcast. If you're out in public and you're talking to people, you're interacting with people like normal people do. Yeah. If something happens, go out of your way to show love. Yeah. Back somebody up, even if you don't know them. Just show love. Try and do something radical. At the bare minimum, at, at, common courtesy. Yeah, common courtesy <laughs> at the bare minimum. But what would be considered radical in your everyday life. Yeah, it's just to put out a helping hand to a random ass person. Exactly. No. Just do what you can to help push love. Yeah. Support. Because that's what everybody needs. We don't need people looking at you like, oh, this dude's obviously trying to steal from the store. Offer and if he l- is, maybe try and help? No. Just offer... Not like help steal... But like, no, what I'm saying is, like, <laughs> I mean, if you're down with that shit, I guess. No. If you got the spare change, right? Offer to buy something. Like you don't know his situation yeah. or her situation. Yeah. Like just try and help. It's true. Be the better person. Don't just write somebody off because oh they're they look like they're trying to steal. Maybe they have a good reason for it. Maybe they can't afford to feed their family that day. Just do what you can to push the love. Not everybody's bad. Everybody does something for a reason. Everybody, everybody just everybody's wants capable of doing something bad for the betterment of their situation. Everybody wants to take care of those people around them. Yep. They might not have the means. Try and help them out. That's a good message. I like that. I think that's where we end this podcast today. On Phil's. Can we name this Kanye twenty twenty question mark? No. Um, Come on! Feels very insightful, nice. What, George? You look, you look perplexed. Yeah, you had no. a thing you wanted to say a while ago. Yeah. Oh, oh. Um. Sorry. Basically, you already said it. It just be nicer in your personal life. Don't be a dick. Um. But do remember that at the end of the day, tribalism is something you can only chip away at. It's never going to go away. Chimps do it. Bonobos do it. Everyone does it. So don't feel too bad if you have a moment of break. Don't. 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 And we're opening well, the no, podcast no. back up. Here we go. So, <laughs> the, you know what's no, funny? I'm is agreeing with George. George, I had a conversation with my coworkers, uh, my previous job, that I'm going to become a, 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 a fucking speaker, a um, motivational speaker, an um, uh, inspirational speaker. And the title of my tour is going to be called "Don't Be a Dick," and it's going to be the shortest seminar of all time. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it to where like it's the most difficult thing to set up, like. Everyone has to come in single file, like maybe two at a time to their seat. Make it like this super long process. And then just go up there and be like, yeah, I just basically just stop being a dick. And then leave. That's the end of the seminar. <laughs> so, 
George, I wasn't going to disagree with you. All I was going to say is we got the same thoughts. I know. Like, yeah. That's what I said. In your daily life, just do what you can to help chip away. The more people chip away and the more people help break down the stereotypes, the better life will become for everyone. Shit. Tattoos used to be frowned upon in the workplace. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. And now they're becoming more and more common. True. Piercings are becoming True. more and more common. True. So, I love like, how he just, just looked at Cody and was like... I mean, because I blasted my hand. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking <laughs> well, stabbed my face. Are you scared so, of magnets now or... No, yeah. they're not. I, I think you should be small. I would hate to see him in an MRA. An MRI machine. MRA. That'd be so cool. The tattoo shoots off of his hand. Fly off. Yeah, that'd be some Mortal Kombat stuff right there. Like. I'm pretty that's sure a- they have things in the machines now where if it detects something, it makes a loud noise and it stops. Oh, no, it'll still rip out oh, of your a face. Magnet is a magnet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't give don't a fuck. Off. Oh, yeah, yeah, they'll rip it out your face. Uh, oh. Venom 2.0. Oh. oh, man. I think if Cody was ever in uh, Mortal Kombat character, any fatality done on you would just be sticking a magnet down your throat and watch your face of myself as Baraka. Okay. Dude, have you seen his new fatalities in those? Okay. <sighs> We'll touch on games later because I don't get a game segment anymore. I have an idea to talk to you about later, so chill. <gasps> People God talk damn. to me? No, I've been trying to come up with ideas for this podcast. Y'all just need to relax. Can I, can I give my personal experience with the whole tattoo in the workplace thing? You know what I've noticed? We're over an hour, but yeah. Huh? We're over an hour, but yeah. It's all right. Sometimes. I'm just best. saying, like, it's, it's odd, right? Because I, I've done a lot of the shit that um, basically... Uh, Discredits you as a person in a professional workplace, work, work workplace, workforce. I was trying to say workforce, workplace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, what I'm saying is, I'm a white dude with dreadlocks with multiple face piercings and now a hand tattoo. Yeah. It's funny to me because most customers, upon like first glance, it's like, ah, oh, geez, like you know, what I'm saying like, but if you know your shit, which I do, they have no other. They can't do anything but trust what I'm telling them. The problem, the only problem I have, is the younger, ignorant generation that thinks they can be cool with me now because of the things that I've done. And that, that is really hard to get by because then when you got to tell them, oh, it's going to cost this much, then they're looking at you crazy because they think you're buddy-buddy now. Mm. This ain't that. This, I'm still professional. Yeah, I do all this crazy shit, but you're still gonna have to pay me three hundred fifty dollars for your car back. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it's like it's weird. Like hit him with I, one of those. Oh, that'd be great if I only charge you that much, wouldn't it? <laughs> We've kind of reached that gray zone with mm-hmm. tattoos and piercings. It's a strange. No, well, I mean, but we we they still look at me crazy. But if you know your shit, what can you say? But we haven't quite gotten there with people of color. Yet, there are people of color... He did it right this time. Phil's learning on the fly. There are people of color who hold high status in mm-hmm. the community. But they're still, but like, they're discredited. Still look, yeah. yeah. Hell, LeBron just it's, got the word nigger sprayed, like, spray paint across his house the other, like, last season. But it's the same thing. Like, people with tattoos and piercings have come farther. Mm-hmm. Than people of color, uh, like I live, you just I have know. <laughs> you have to work on it, and they did it in a lot. Of I would, I would, I would, tattoos I would, and piercings, would, it might help. I would, I would say it's like a it's like a give and take scenario, but yeah, because I mean, a black person with no f- tattoos and no piercings is more than likely to get a business setting job than me. True, 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 true. But but there's also the whole white thing, so it's like yeah, I don't know, because it's like it, it's it is a weird gray zone. It's like. Oh, he's obviously in their brain. Consciously, they're not like, oh, he's white. Let's give him the job. But it's a subconscious thing. But it's also a subconscious thing that he's got shit in his face and a demon on his hand. But the also the other subconscious thing is that Jamal wants the job. But they're not sure about Jamal. Yep. But Cody sounds nice. Yeah. Yo, I love um, this. Is gonna sound shitty. Like I don't like being black because I love being black. But there, are, like when I fill out like job applications, I just say don't want to tell them my race. I oh just, really? Yeah, I just leave it alone. Really? You put a what's it? Prefer not to yep. answer or something like that? Mm. Huh? Yep. Every time. Because you because because 
to white America, you have a white ass name. Yeah. Well, it's not even that. It's because it takes. Well, you're more th- you're more likely to get a callback. Yeah, than yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. Whose name would which be. Which I understand that, which is dope. But like at the same time, it's also, <laughs> it's also because shout out, Mama. Same though. It's also because I don't like whether it would be one way or the other. Like even if I were white, I feel like I would still do it just because of who I am, because I don't want that those those preconceived notions about who you know I, I just am noticed? as an option. What? TQL. Total no, quality. What yeah, what about it? Something. There weren't a lot of black people there. I saw like two. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like a status quo that businesses have to have, right? Yeah. Diversity was... Yeah. I mean, I've thought about this. I don't know. Like, I've, I've thought about this, Cody. But I've just learned to like, you know, whatever. It is what it is. This is interesting. However, I was more qualified and they still didn't give me the job. Maybe it's because of the dreadlocks. Fun fact of the day. I don't know if you guys know this. But it is 100% federally legal now to tell you no or to get rid of you <coughs> at a job because of dreadlocks. And they've always been able to fire you whenever they want in Indiana. This is true. Well, for whatever I'm talking reason. like federally. It's 100%. It's, not, it's no longer considered discrimination to either deny or fire someone because of dreadlocks alone. This We're is a this, federal guys, law now. Guys, we got to stop this podcast. I'm sorry. But it, it falls along with discrimination. I know. We Let's just... segment to video games real quick. <gasps> no, 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 Phil. No, we, we don't do have the. T- we don't have the time. Yeah, yes, we do. <laughs> no, we don't. Five minutes. Phil. Max. Uh, Anthem uh, is a thing, and I, the servers blow ass. I got way more than five minutes worth of games. This is we why I've tell- it as a separate. Right. And no, it's about. It's it's, 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 well, it's not going to work. I'm not going to force it. We'll I appreciate it. your effort, Phil, but we're going to have a podcast for it. Ooh. Oh, you want to talk about that podcast? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm going to brainstorm, figure out ideas the way we can work in games into a podcast and it's only gonna be about video games. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining this episode of the Classic Clearroom Podcast. Do what you can throughout your daily lives to further the movement of love. Hashtag don't be a dick. Exactly. I'm OG Philly G. Thank you. Resident gamer, Henry and Gryphos. No longer streamer. I'm George. I said game. I'm your mother's favorite side whore. And it's your boy, Baby Ice Cube. Peace out.